What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss even more new changes and just information about iOS 17.4. We're also going to discuss the latest in the Apple versus Epic Games feud, fresh iOS 18 rumors, new iPads coming, a crazy AirTag story, and more. And as always, if you wanna stay updated with everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also check out the Apple Den newsletter. Okay, so let's start by talking about iOS 17.4. Now, before we get to that, I just want to show you guys what is on my lock screen right now. This is my brand new wallpaper collection called Rewind. So I'm going to tap through these different wallpapers that you can get for your lock screen. It's I just think they're super sick. That one was zoomed in for some reason. But you can see we have the old iPod Classic. We have the original iPhone 2G. We have the Motorola Razor. We have the Nokia 3310. You have all these different ones, Game Boy Advance SP, and they're all carefully crafted and high quality, and they look great on at the lock screen no matter what device you have so if you want to check these out and if you want to just help support the channel support me more than just you know watching ads on youtube i would appreciate it if you went and checked out the rewind wallpaper collection if you don't want all these random ones like with a calculator and everything like that i do also have an apple version of that which is cheaper because it doesn't include like the nes and the game boy and all of those but let me know what you guys think about them down in the comments below and also be sure to share your screenshots of your rewind wallpapers on your device with me over on x or on instagram okay so now let's really get into ios 17.4 so this week we did see the final official release of ios 17.4 and my prediction from last week's apple weekly came true where we got a different bill number from the rc so if you were running the rc you still got an update earlier this week because it was a different build however even though we got a new build we're still missing Missing several different features such as the stopwatch live activity the podcast don't show as the color here in the widget anymore they just show purple like it did before and we're still missing several other changes as well including here in Safari we no longer have that wide tab bar anymore like we had on previous betas however one thing that iOS 17.4 does add that we did not discuss previously is that 17.4 now allows budget applications to read real-time Apple card transaction information so before iOS 17.4, Mint was the only application that was able to access real-time Apple Card transaction information. I guess they had a partnership with Apple, but now you can you know, use this in any application, any budget application, because it is now available for developers to implement, which is a big deal because I know I use a budget tracker I always have, and Mint is just kind of the mainstream one that's not the best. So that is good news if you do use an application like this. Now, a much bigger change in iOS 17.4 and iPad OS 17.4 are the security patches. So if you go to Apple's security updates page right here, you can see there are multiple security patches with iOS 17.4. Now the most important ones are the two CVEs that Apple reported have been actively exploited. Anytime we see that, that's how you know you want to go ahead and update because that could be potentially harming people out there in the real world. So the two that are you know most important here are the kernel bug right here where it says an attacker with an arbitrary kernel read and write capability may be able to bypass kernel memory protections apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited and then the other one was related to rt kit so it has the same impact and it was a memory corruption issue that was addressed with improved validation so we do have other ones here as well including some of these safari bugs uh, safari private browsing where private browsing tabs may be accessed without authentication and several other changes and bug fixes in here, including them in the share sheet, shortcuts, all of that. So definitely a good you know, idea to go ahead and update to iOS 17.4 if you want to keep your device as up-to-date and secure as possible. Now, there was also a change in iOS 17.4 and HomePod OS 17.4. If you updated your HomePod, you would notice that there's a new feature that says, this update enables Siri to learn your preferred media service, so you no longer need to include the name of the media app in your request. And it says this update also includes performance and stability improvements so basically if you use spotify or pandora whatever other you know music streaming application you use before you would have to say play so and so on spotify but now you don't have to say that the home pod and your iphone are going to learn you know with machine learning what your preferred 
uh, streaming platform is, so you don't have to say that every time anymore. So the biggest new feature in iOS 17.4 was undoubtedly sideloading. So that is only going to be available in the EU. So if you are in the EU, you just got perhaps the biggest iOS update of all time because you are now able to install third-party app stores and download applications outside of the app store, something we've never been able to do in the history of the iPhone unless you were jailbroken. So that's a big deal. And unsurprisingly, I've received a lot of questions about people asking, can I spoof my location? Can I, you know, pretend that I'm in the EU? Will Apple, you know, not know that I'm not in the EU just so I can access sideloading? And the answer to that is no, Apple definitely thought about that. However, we now know exactly how Apple checks and makes sure that you're in the EU. So Apple uses a combination of your Apple ID region plus geolocation checks that happen on device. So it looks like your device is constantly using your geolocation and sending that information back to Apple. Now, Apple cannot see your location. They said this stays on device, so they're not accessing any location data, but it's constantly checking for that. And it also has to match up with your region that your Apple ID account is set to. Now, where it gets interesting is when you leave the EU. So if you were to live in the EU and you took a trip to Canada or you took a trip to the United States or Australia, you know, your applications, your third party applications are going to stop working. Now, Apple does say that there is a grace period for short travel. And at first they didn't say how long this actually was, but now they came out and said that you have a 30 day grace period. So if you're outside of the EU and you leave for 30 days, you will have up to 30 days to access all of your third party applications and download new applications. But on day 31, you're not going to be able to use any applications you downloaded and you're not going to be able to download any new applications. You can't update applications, you can't access anything that you were able to via sideloading, at least not until you get back into the EU. So Apple is taking sideloading very seriously. They do not want anybody else accessing this. Now, also this week, we did see the updates to watchOS 10.4, tvOS 17, and also macOS 14.4. All of those updates came out on Thursday this week, whereas we saw the iOS and iPadOS updates on Tuesday. So a really weird schedule this week, which by the way, if you missed my macOS Sonoma 14.4 video, I will leave that link down in the description below. I cover all of the new changes in that update. And also this week, Apple did release the M3 MacBook Air. They released that yesterday on Friday. I did also do a video on that. If you want to check it out, it's linked down below. Now, as far as the overall performance on iOS 17.4, I have no complaints. I mean, the, the new build of iOS 17.4 performs pretty much exactly like the RC build. So the, it is a different build number. However, they perform nearly identical in my experience. Now, I did go ahead and run a fresh Geekbench test just to ensure that this lined up. And we scored a 2964 on the single core and a 7202 on the multi core. So you can compare that to the previous build, the previous final build of 17.4, the RC version. And we do actually have a higher single core, but a slightly lower multi core score. You can see March 6th versus February 27th. And then as far as battery life goes, for some reason, the RC build had a lot of people complaining about bad battery life. But ever since the final release with that new bill number, I've not really seen many people complain about the battery life. So that's pretty interesting. And if we look at my last 10 days here on my main device, my iPhone 15 Pro Max, which has been running iOS 17.4 since it was released, you can see, you know, we didn't get that update till Tuesday. So you can look Tuesday through Friday in this case, and you can see the difference in battery activity and battery usage there. It seems about the same as the RC build for me. And you can see my last 24 hours right here. Really no complaints with battery life, you know, on 17.4. I've really not had any issues with battery life at all throughout the entire 17.4 beta cycle. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 17.5 beta one. And I would expect that to come next week, most likely on Tuesday, March 12th. Apple typically releases betas on Tuesday. So I would expect to see that then and public beta will probably be the next day. And after that, we likely won't see beta two for two weeks until the week of March 25th, and then a final release sometime in mid to late April. However, at some point in March, we could very well see a iOS 17.4.1 update to patch up some bugs, maybe return some of the features that we're missing. I doubt that, but it's probably just going to be for security patches and bug fixes. Don't be surprised if we see that, especially if we 
see new iPads coming out, which we'll talk about that, which we'll talk about that in a moment. But since we got, you know, multiple new devices and potentially more new devices on the way, that usually means we will have a double point update at some point before the next major release. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And we just got a new MacBook Air yesterday, but there's plans for a much different type of MacBook in the future a folding MacBook. And this comes according to Ming-Chi Kuo, who says, I've received many inquiries about whether Apple plans to mass produce the foldable iPhone or iPad in 2025 or 2026. My latest survey indicates that currently, Apple's only foldable product with a clear development schedule is a 20.3 inch MacBook expected to enter mass production in 2027. And I don't know if you guys have seen it lately, but there are several different foldable laptops out there. Some of them have existed for a while, but lately there have been you know, a lot more coming to market. I think Asus just launched one and several other companies have launched these folding laptop computers. So it'll be really interesting to see Apple get into that space. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen a new MacBook. I mean, we've had the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro forever. So it's going to be really interesting to see a new MacBook enter that lineup. So we're going to see iOS 18 in June at Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference. And now we have a look at some potential upcoming iOS 18 accessibility features, courtesy of Mac rumors. So they apparently have an industry source who gave them information about some of the key accessibility improvements coming later this year. These include adaptive voice shortcuts. So they say that this feature will allow users to map a unique spoken phrase to an accessibility setting. There might be a new categories section for live speech, and it looks like more applications will support custom font sizes. So it says with Mac OS 15, applications like books, news, stocks, tips, and weather will all be able to access custom font sizes. And they also mentioned how with Mac OS 15, you might be able to alter the font size of the menu bar within Mac OS. And then the last thing they mentioned is that Apple has additional accessibility features in the works, one of which utilizes on device eye tracking. So maybe something like we see in the Vision Pro could potentially be coming in iOS 18. That would be awesome. And Apple typically releases the accessibility features ahead of WWDC in June. So we should see those features come out in a press release in the next couple of months. However, of course, all eyes are going to be on the AI features that are coming in iOS 18. I think a lot of people, that's all they care about with iOS 18. Like they don't care about a redesign. They don't care about anything else. They care about the AI features. And I think that you should be because I think these features are going to be massive for Apple, not just Siri, just Apple and the iPhone in general. These generative AI features are going to be big. So I really cannot wait to see what Apple unveils in June. Now we also have new CAD renders for the upcoming iPhone SE4 and also the iPhone 16 courtesy of 91 mobiles. So this is the CAD file of the iPhone 16 Pro and it looks very similar to the iPhone 15 Pro. However, it looks like the action button is slightly longer than what we saw with the iPhone 15 Pro. And then we also have the highly speculated capture button on the left hand side of the device where the millimeter wave antenna was located beforehand. So this looks like it's going to actually happen. We've been hearing that for a while. We thought it was coming with the iPhone 15. Now it looks like it's coming with the iPhone 16 Pro. And if you haven't been following along with the rumors, the capture button is going to be basically just like what it sounds like. It's going to be able to capture photos and videos quickly with that button. So kind of like what you use the volume buttons beforehand. I'm sure it's going to have a lot more, you know, utility than that. But that's kind of what we know for the moment. And then we also have fresh renders for the iPhone SE4, which we've seen so many rumors about for the past several years now. You know, I think this thing is going to sell like hotcakes no matter when it comes out. So Apple is kind of taking their time with that because I think they know it's also going to sell like crazy. But these new renders are very interesting because it shows a new design very similar to that of the iPhone 14, the base model iPhone 14. So it looks like it's going to have a 6.1 inch display and face ID. So it's going to be the first iPhone SE that does not have a home button. And it looks like it will have a notch up top as as well, similar to the older iPhones before the pill cutout. And it looks like it's also going to have a USB-C port and an action button. And it looks like this CAD render also confirms that we're going to have a single firing camera lens, most likely a 48 megapixel lens. And this iPhone SE has been delayed multiple times, but it looks like now it's going to be coming in 2025. So next year, usually these come out earlier than the other iPhones as well. So potentially in spring 2025, so about a year from now. Okay, so now we have to talk about the latest going on with the Apple versus Epic feud. So this battle has been going on since 2020. It was very high 
profile. I'm sure all of you have heard about the Epic Games versus Apple lawsuit and Fortnite on iPhone, all that stuff. Well, it just took another turn because, of course, with the EU being able to launch third-party app stores, Epic was planning on launching their own third-party app store on iOS in the EU. However, it looks like that is not going to be happening because even though they got approved three weeks ago with their new developer account, earlier this week, Apple terminated that new developer account and sent them a letter explaining why. And Apple basically said, you've broken the rules before and said bad things about us, so why should we trust you this time? They basically just wanted to hear Epic say, you know, why they should be trusted this time around. And what was even more controversial about this whole story is that Apple actually referenced an X post. So a post from Epic CEO Tim Sweeney, they basically said that that was one of the reasons that their new developer account was terminated because he publicly criticized their DMA compliance plan. And that might sound silly, but Apple actually had the right to do that. They actually had the right to terminate the developer account for whatever reason they wanted because of what happened in the court ruling in 2021. They basically got permission, you know, in that filing that they can terminate Epic's accounts for whatever reason they see necessary. However, since the EU is involved, I think Apple had added pressure here and they did what we thought before last week was just unprecedented for Apple. They went back on their word. So that is two weeks in a row. Apple has gone back on their word on a feature that they've implemented, or in this case, a developer account that they terminated. And now it looks like Apple has reinstated Epic's developer accounts. They said this in a statement to Mac rumors following conversations with Epic, they have committed to follow the rules, including our DMA policies. As a result, Epic Sweden AB has been permitted to re-sign the developer agreement and accepted into the Apple developer program. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the EU is involved here because just last week, we saw Apple do the same thing. They went back on the word. This is something that Apple does not do. Apple is very known for not going back on their word. Once they make a decision, that's it. People are going to hate it. They don't care. They're going to stick with it. But now two weeks in a row, they've gone back on their word when the EU is involved. So this is crazy. And you know, I don't think that this Apple versus Epic Games saga is anywhere near over. Both of them have so much money, they're just going to keep fighting until the death. But I don't think the Epic's ever going to win because this is Apple's platform at the end of the day. And we all know Apple loves to lock people down and they don't like competition. So I don't see this ever being a win for Epic. However, with the EU involved, anything is possible. Now, if you've been paying attention to the rumor mill, you know that iPad Pros and iPad Airs were expected early earlier this week. However, we did not see any new iPads. We only saw the new MacBook Airs. However, we are still expecting new iPad Pro and iPad Air models to come this month. And now we have a new report from DigiTimes that says Apple is planning to produce 8.5 million OLED iPad Pro panels this year. And it looks like the 13 inch model, which is going to be slightly bigger than the 12.9 inch model from previous years, Apple is expecting that to be the big seller, which is going to be interesting, especially with the pricing. We know a price increase is coming. I just wonder how expensive, you know, a 13 inch OLED iPad Pro is going to get. And then finally, just as tradition here on the channel, let's talk about another crazy AirTag story. So this time, a woman in Texas noticed a lot of unknown AirTag alerts notifications late last year, but was not able to find any AirTag on her. And she was suspicious because she didn't even own any AirTags. However, since she did have an iPhone, she used the Find My app to search for the AirTag. And sure enough, she found a magnetic box attached to the underside of her vehicle, which had an AirTag inside. So she, of course, called the police and they obtained a subpoena to serve to Apple in order to find out who the AirTag belonged to. And shockingly, it came back to a 39 year old man who the woman didn't even know you were probably expecting another ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend right that's how these stories usually go but this is a random person and according to the police report the man told police that he thought the woman hit his vehicle and fled so he followed the vehicle and followed her home in order to find out who was responsible for hitting his car. So he just decided to put an air tag under the car when she parked and didn't come back out. Yeah, sure, buddy. I'm sure that's how it went. So he was arrested and is currently held on a $2,000 bond. So as always, I have to remind you guys, if you get a report of an unknown air tag nearby, make sure to play the sound or, you know, track down that air tag because you can use your Find My application to do that. If you see it, don't just assume that it's hidden somewhere and you're not going to find it, you can always make a sound from that air tag and sometimes you can even you know track it down using proximity so you will be able to find it as long as you look and as long as you are aware you know how this feature works to locate those unknown air tags and stay safe out there people are crazy i mean this is a random person trying to stalk this woman 
sad. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe down below if you don't want to miss next week's episode. Also, once again, be sure to check out the new Rewind wallpaper collection. I think you guys are going to love it. It is also linked up here in the top right of this video. If you click that link right there, it will take you to the page for you to purchase that. I really appreciate the support. I think you guys are going to love them. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.